Hey, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for tuning in on this Monday. Super blessed to be with you. Uh, I am just in love with the text that we are in. In fact, this past Sunday, I kind of preached a, a little different than I would. I normally try to give awesome points and really, th but this, this time I just needed to stick with the text and sort of expose a little bit of what the Greek is behind the English that we read today. Oh my gosh, the Greek language is beautiful. It goes so deeper than our words will ever go. Um, and so as Paul writes uh, to the church of Philippi, it's in response to their concern for him. Now, if you've read the book of Acts, you'll see that Paul is imprisoned. He's actually uh, taken from where he was overseas to Rome. Their boat ship wrecks on the side of an island. They, he eventually gets there and the church of Philippi hears about this and they send a brother with a sizable gift to just care for all the needs of Paul. And Paul actually writes in Philippians, hey, I'm sending this brother back because I'm scared for his life. I'm good to go. In fact, I've got joy. And so much of the book of Philippians is predicated around the joy in suffering. Paul's in prison and he's writing this in prison and he's responding to his dear church. Now, Paul would be considered the pastor of their church. Now, I know that they've got a brother in charge of the church who's probably now installed as the pastor, but Paul is kind of like the founding pastor trying to contextualize this for you, right? And so hearing that he's not good sparks a concern in everybody's heart. And he responds saying, guys, I'm good. I've got joy. God is alive and well. Jesus is good. He's got me. I am in a good place. He starts off in chapter one, just saying that when he prays about them, he's grateful for them. He loves them. He, he talks about whether I get to see you again or not, because at this point, Paul does not know that he's not getting out of this prison. He says, if I hear or see anything about this church, I would want to hear or see that you have continued to live worthy of the gospel that you've received. That's in verse uh, chapter one, verse 27. And so as he launches off uh, Philippians chapter two, verse one, he says, therefore, now, anytime we see, therefore, we got to ask why it's therefore. And, and that is it. The, the chapter one, verse 27 is that launching patty saying, hey, because you need to live a life worthy of the gospel, you need to now do these things. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever considered how unifying the gospel is? Think about it. Have you ever thought about how unifying the gospel is? The gospel is the one thing that takes everything that has nothing in common and makes it equal at the foot of the cross. Time and time again in the New Testament, in the epistles, you see Paul will say that there are no Gentile or Jews, no circumcised nor uncircumcised, no barbarian, scathian, slave or free, but Christ who was all and it is in all. That is in your Colossians chapter 3 verse 11. In Galatians, it repeats itself saying that there are no Jews or no Gentiles. What he's saying is that there is nothing more unifying than the gospel. But see, while God has made the promise that his church will be rebuilt and that nothing can come against it, the enemy has done everything he can to divide it. And so Paul says, hey, I need you to first and foremost make your aim the good news. The good news that we were once dead to our sins and Christ has made us alive by grace, through faith, in him, no work of our own, all by the grace of God. And in the grace of God, there are things he's come alongside you with to help you in this walk of Christ. Now, tomorrow, we're going to start to break that down. But today, what I would love for you to pray about is asking God the question, have I made the gospel the center point of my heart? 
Because if I can make the gospel the center part of my heart, then what that means is my agendas begin to be laid aside. My problems begin to be laid aside. Now, let me be clear with you. Just because you have the gospel does not mean you won't have problems. Jesus was clear in saying that if you follow me, you will have troubles in this world. But take heart. I have overcome the world. So my question to you is, has the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, the good news that makes every single one of us equal at the foot of the cross, has that really began to transform your heart? Have you really taken in the depths and how far the love of Christ has gone to secure your eternity in heaven? Have you really thought about the sovereignty of God, his providence to choose you as his and to keep you as his forever? Have you ever thought about the depths of his love that forgives you time and time again? Have you ever thought about how he resurrected from that grave and has robbed the sting of death that you and I can live for an eternity in heaven when we accept him as our Lord and Savior? Have you ever thought about that? If you do, it changes everything and it should change our motives. Tomorrow, let's talk about those motives. God bless.